thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. This morning's psalm is Psalm 41. Blessed is he that considereth the poor and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. The Lord preserve him and keep him alive, that he may be blessed upon earth and deliver not thou him into the will of his enemies. The Lord comfort him when he lieth sick upon his bed. Make thou all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity, and his heart conceiveth falsehood within himself. And when he cometh forth, he telleth it. All mine enemies whisper together against me. Even against me do they imagine this evil. Let the sentence of guiltiness proceed against him. And now that he lieth, let him rise up no more. Yea, even mine own familiar friend, whom I trusted, who did also eat of my bread, hath laid great weight for me. But be thou merciful unto me, O Lord. Raise thou me up again, and I shall reward them. By this I know thou favourest me, that mine enemy doth not triumph against me. And when I am in my health, thou upholdest me and shall set before thy face for ever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the first chapter of the Book of Lamentations, starting at the first verse. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great among the nations, she that was a princess among the provinces, has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night, with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. 
all her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The road to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan, her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her foes have become her masters, her enemies prosper, because the Lord has made her suffer for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children have gone away, captive before the foe. From daughter Zion has departed all her majesty. Her princes have become like stags that find no pasture. They fled without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and wandering all the precious things that were hers in days of old when her people fell into the hand of the foe and there was no one to help her. The foe looked on mocking over her downfall. Jerusalem sinned grievously, so she has become a mockery. All who honoured her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. She herself groans and turns her face away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She took no thought of her future. Her downfall was appalling with none to comfort her. O oh Lord, look at my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. Enemies have stretched out their hands over all her precious things. She has even seen the nations invade her sanctuary, those whom you forbade to enter your congregation. All her people groan as they search for bread. They trade their treasures for food to revive their strength. Look, O oh Lord, and see how worthless I have become. Is it nothing to you? Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O oh God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Saviours. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is taken from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St Luke, starting at verse 1. 
Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money, so he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them, when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had been sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember the holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, wild without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully heal us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and everlasting God, who, of thy tender love towards mankind, hath sent thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh, and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience, and also be made partakers of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all the sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who hath safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, please do bless the Church, your body on earth. We thank you for our bishops Graham, Alan and Jonathan. Please sustain them and give them wisdom as the weight of leadership falls on their shoulders. Strengthen your church. May it, may we, speak to the world in a language that is relevant and understood. May the church demonstrate integrity and your love and lead by example in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our benefits of Colgate and Tulane. Thank you so much for Alaric and his love for you and for us, demonstrated in his work and care in serving us during our physical isolation. Thank you for every member of our church community. Please be close to us, going before, behind, and on every side of us as we journey through this most extraordinary Holy Week. Be with us in our sorrows and fears 
and also in our joys and help us to always be thankful for our many blessings and mindful of those for whom life is particularly difficult at this time. Help us to love and serve and minister to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In our diocesan prayer calendar, we pray for the Flegg Coastal Group of Hemsby, Horsey, West Somerton, Winterton, and their clergy, John Bloomfield. We bring before you our archdeacons, Stephen Betts, Karen Hutchinson, and Ian Bentley. In the worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Meru in Kenya and their Bishop Charles Medenwa, West Malaysia and their Bishop Ing Moon Hing, and the Episcopal Church of Idaho and their Bishop Brian Thorne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for your blessing for our Queen. Thank you for her compassionate and encouraging message to the nation last night. We pray for our government. Please bless and guide leaders in making difficult decisions and give wisdom on how to best cope with coronavirus. We are all so indebted to our brothers and sisters who are still working in public services, shops, transport, infrastructural services, pharmacies and the NHS. Thank you so much that they are working to enable society to function for us all. Thank you for all the times that every individual has gone to work rather than stay at home. Please do bless and protect each one of them and their families and bless us as we stay at home, even when missing our friends and families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick and suffering, and for all those with the virus, for those who are frightened or lonely. We pray for the homeless, those suffering with addiction, those who have mental health problems, and those who feel just a bit lost or impotent in being able to help, please reassure us all of our value and assure us of your love and presence. We also pray for those who have asked for our prayers. For Sharon, Sally, James, Deirdre, Father Alan, Father Jonathan, Canon Richard, Paul, Leah, Megan, Derek, Derek, Mel, Barry, Fiona, Robert, Susan, Stephen, Nairi, Gemma, Ian. We also pray for those on the list on the altar at Colgate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, that you will please comfort and strengthen those who mourn. And we bring before you all who have died, particularly those who have died recently. Douglas, Diane, Jackie and Trevor. We pray for all of those who will die today, particularly those who will die alone not close to family. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We also remember those whose anniversary of death is near this time. For Derek Albert Lingley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Finally, Father, we pray for ourselves. As we think of ourselves and our families and friends, we remember all the countries around the world even less equipped to deal with coronavirus than we are. Help us not to be overwhelmed, 
but to do what we can from our homes, including prayer. Help us to remember our prayers are valuable and that we are praying to you, the God of the universe, who knows and loves all his children way more than we can ever even imagine. Help us to remember that you listen to our prayers. Thank you, Father, for holding us in your hand and for being with us today in all that the day brings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, and may, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>